This means feel that you can swing into position where you place solidly with enough space on both halves of your pelvis. We will go into a mudra today that's very simple. We are placing our tip of our index finger on the first digit of our thumb, maybe just slightly above it, underneath the nail. And that's it for today. So for everyone that's still moving and haven't probably gotten it the first time, how simple Mutter today is the first digit or tip of our index finger on the first digit of our thumb. It's enough if you just place it very gently, as if you would hold the wing of a butterfly, barely touching. You can keep your eyes closed or have them in a soft gaze, half opened. And the mudra we are holding today is for a really good connection between both our, of our brain hemispheres to both sides of our heart. And I'm showing you the illustration of this. It's really an infinity sign placed upright, vertically. So, this mudra wants to aid you energetically or support you that we can use consciously both brain hemispheres come into the corpus callosum so that we can be very fluent in our verbal expressions, creative. And when it comes to our heart, we really want to have all of our heart online so we can be fully committed to whatever we're doing and doing it wholeheartedly and not be indecisive and say, I don't know, maybe I'm going to do it later. But if we have this energetic, energetical connection between both halves of our heart, we can say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it. So we want to develop this potential right now. It's always about when there are a lot of things changing on the outside and we are thrown out of our usual grooves of acting and thinking, then it's really important that we have this connection between both brain hemispheres and both sides of our heart so we can feel our yes and we can feel our no. And maybe by reuniting our bo both brain hemispheres, we can elevate our inner vision and also our understanding to a higher viewpoint and a deeper understanding thereby. So I wish for us all that we are energetically well-nourished in this aspect. And furthermore, this mudra supports the flexibility in the wood element. Uh, Springtime is always a call for growth. And we always have to distinguish between the things we can influence and those we can't. And this flexibility in the wood element allows us to be flexible with the potential that's arising within us and how we want to use our kundalini and our shakti energy. So where are we directing our growth to? And furthermore, this mudra supports our anya, our third eye, recognition, insight, vision, and it always starts with ourselves. So what are the topics in our life right now? What are we working on? And it's easier to go into deliberate growth in the wood element. And a nice bottom line for this is growing in life energy. So I invite you again to come to the floor, sense the connection. And from this opening, very consciously to the movement of your breath. So we are always starting where we are. And no matter if we're inhaling 
or emptying and exhaling, if it's possible that, that we complete and maybe over time deepen the breath. And we're doing this with a very calm interest where we can unfold from within to without. Or if you want to look at this from another perspective, how we are in contact or coming into contact. And I invite you to become very calm and relaxed. And we're staying here observing breathing for five deep breaths. And if you're quicker or faster than me, that's okay too. One, two, Three. Feel this earthing and this unfolding. Four. And five. And then very slowly, allow your mudra to dissolve with an exhale. You can stay with both hands draped over your knees. You can come with, alternatively, with your hands on your heart. And you can sing with me or you can listen, whatever feels right. So we're taking a couple of deep breaths and I'm going to intonate the mantra and you can listen or you can come along with me. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Punaptu Sahavir Yangaravai Dejas Vinavaditamastu Ma Om Shanti 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 And with that, I invite you to bow to your own life energy. To feel that you are around you, within you, and slowly roll back up to a seated position. Very good. And our first pose today is a releasing pose. We are working with the caterpillar, you can use a bolster in between your legs or two. 
So if you have a bolster, and depending on your forward bend, maybe you place it vertically and supporting your knees, so you can probably rest your head on top of the pillow, having the knees bent and supported. If you need to, the arms draped over the bolster. And maybe you want to settle down on the bolster, arriving here. Maybe you don't need a bolster in front of you and want to place it, as I said, underneath your knees and support your head with your fingertips. So feel free to use all the options so you can support your legs and that you can, to the best of your possibilities and ability, to sink everything in the floor, releasing it, letting go. And you don't have to be completely frozen in the sense of not moving at all. So allow yourself to shift and to go with your breath and to go with the soft movements that your body probably wants to do so that we can stay connected to our body. And you can stay alive and feel alive and then maybe after slow, gentle movements releasing deeper. So we're staying here for the first two minutes, maybe you're already settled in, and I invite you to find the connection, maybe with your breath, between the belly that's expanding, the heart, so that you can feel the breath ascending very slowly, maybe over the back. And maybe really releasing your head with an exhale into the bolster, depending if your neck feels fine with this. So you can slowly glide deeper, releasing the back with the breath and the pose, so we can be in the back line, in the superficial back line of the body. This is um, wintertime self-orientation, bladder meridian. And we want to give this some space today. And you can go back in your mind to Christmas or New Year and gather all the energy you've activated back then. Which kind of aims have moved you so we can gather this and bring it into our personal growth in springtime. So let's connect with this again, so that this space energy of a constructive, life-affirming attitude can come in contact with this wholeheartedly saying yes to our growth, to our own aliveness, being alive, and just reconnect to that and letting it grow. And even if you hear the gong ringing the end of the pose, maybe you want to stay here for a couple of moments longer so that we can be patient and in contact with what we're sensing, the breath, and maybe reconnect also with trusting life, loving life, so that we can really say yes on all levels of our being, and that we're saying yes to growing. And then feel again with an exhale where you are. Stabilize the lumbar spine by drawing in the navel just slightly. 
releasing the head, embracing ourselves from deep within. And where we are, we're slowly coming back up to a seated position, and by slowly I mean really take your time. Feel the massage you're giving yourself as the back comes back into a elongated vertical position. And very consciously in a ritual feel this being upright again. And let's look forward very deliberately. And with an exhale, I invite you to free up your legs. If you had a pillow, remove it and come back onto your back so that you can really ground your whole body fully. So the whole back is in contact with the floor. And the floor and the earth always provide stability. So after this reconnecting to our orientating energies of winter time, our alignment that we set there, let's soak a little bit in this stability and meditate with our values, our goals, if it's suitable for us where we're heading right now, and if we're in alignment mentally, emotionally. Feel maybe with an exhale that you're letting go, that you can put some weight off into the, into the floor, into the earth, and find a couple of long deep breaths. One. Feel that the breath may expand in all directions, to the front, to the back, to the sides. that we can collect all this serenity, this calm into our body and that maybe the clarity in our alignment has increased and can radiate from our body four and five very good. And then slowly, wherever they may be, release your hands, bend one leg, inhale, exhale, let the other leg come to it. We're bringing our legs and arms up to the ceiling and mobilizing our wrists, our ankles. And you can really spread the toes and the fingers and maybe yawn that you release the jaw a little bit. So we're opening up the masseter muscle. And stay connected to the breath and the floor as you're doing this, or try to. And then slowly allow the movement to cease. We can really ground our shoulders with an exhale. Take a little bit of momentum, inhale, and with an exhale, with a strong center, come up into Ardha Navasana. So that we can find our center here. And we're looking forward, still. And Ardha Navasana is called Navasana because we're sailing our own creative boat on the vast creative ocean of the universe. So we're trying to stay centered, supporting the lower back, keeping the sp spine straight, and we're here for two. And with three, allow the feet to 
descend, stay in your center, navel to spine, and come over the side on hands and knees. And we're going into frog position. And we want to have our knees far apart. Feel free to use pillows or bolsters or blanket. And there are two versions, either with the tip of or your toes together or with your lower legs parallel to the outer edges of your mat. And feel free also to use a bolster in front of you supporting your trunk. But no matter what kind of leg position you choose, I would like you to sit back and the pelvis can tilt in a way that's interesting for you and there should be no lower back pain. And maybe you place your forehead on the bolster, maybe one of your temple wants to rest there. And it's also fully okay if you don't use a bolster and you're sinking deeper. And I would like for you to feel this asana or pose and your groins and maybe on the inside of your thighs, the adductor area. So feel that you're working on this target area as you're activating this pose. This is where the liver Meridian flows and also dives into the body to nourish the organs, so we want to work there. And after reconnection time, we can check back in if we want to change something. So that we can really reconnect also with this creative life energy that wants to grow. And maybe you want to shift, maybe you want to stay very calm here, hands are soft. And sometimes it's good to just shift a little and also using the breath to shift so we can feel and sense more instead of going into our mental body and journeying off. And we're still here for approximately one minute. So check if everything is released, maybe your shoulders, if they're rolled back. Feel if you collapse in the backside of your heart and if this feels okay, or if you want to push your arms more into the floor and support your heart, the backside of the heart. And stay with this basic unfolding over the backside of your body with your breath ascending breath. And maybe if we're with us, the body reacts to our presence and there's a deeper breath coming, a sigh coming. And just check how much push to the back you want to give yourself today so that the neck is released and you're not fighting. And then slowly, let's come out of the pose. So we're probably lifting the head first, shifting a little bit forward can come from our forearms if we were on them onto our hands. 
and wait for a little bit. So maybe we're moving one foot if we had the lower legs parallel and can support ourselves with our hand and step closer. So it's a gentle, com gentle coming out of the pose. And we're coming back onto our back and maybe you want to move into a counter pose where you have the feet a little bit wider than your mat. And the knees are dropping together at center line to an inside rotation. So it's not about stretching something right now, it's just about this opposite movement of the femur in the acetabulum of the thigh bone in the hip bone or hip socket. And do this in a very relaxed manner, releasing the energy in deeper into the body and breathe. We're giving ourselves permission to relax. And the outer sides of our legs, as the insides of our legs, are the wood element, the sidelines. Gallbladders on the outside, yang. Yin is on the inside, yin. Livers on the inside, yin. So we want to have both energies online, gallbladders, decisiveness, livers, growth and rejuvenation. So we're integrating this at peace. We are here for five long deep breaths. See if you can really release the body into the floor. Remind yourself of Shanti, peace. And sense if there is an opening in the body, in the mind, in the emotional body. When you're really releasing, sinking into the floor. Very good. And then from here, allow your feet to slowly walk back together. So they are in line with your hips and knees. We are transitioning into Apanasana, drawing our knees towards our chest. We can interlace our hands and fingers in front of our shin bones and just roll a little bit up and down or from side to side, also releasing the neck. And maybe feel in this pose what we want to leave behind. It's okay to let go of in this change. And maybe where it's also getting lighter, more easier because of change. And then I invite you to slowly remove your hands, come into center, Take a little bit of a momentum with an inhale and with an exhale coming back up to a seated position. And then whatever you have nearby for your yin practice, it can be a yoga belt or a regular belt or a shawl. So allow that both legs are bent, feet in front of you. And we're would like, if we're rolling back, that both sides, right and left, of our spine are at the same time touching the floor. So let's try this. If we're bringing our arms up with an inhale, the neck is free, so we're not working from the neck muscles or the shoulders. We come into, with an exhale, 
our center, drawing the navel to spine. You can inhale one more time, and then with an exhale, descend onto the floor on those two rails, right and left, to our spine. So we're doing this very slow and deliberately to check if we are using our neck or if we can stay in our core and if both sides of our body are touching at the same time the floor as we roll back vertebrae by vertebrae. And once you've arrived, just allow the left leg to be or stay bent. With the inhale, lift the right bent leg and with an exhale, place it with your ankle over your left thigh. See if the arms, the shoulders and the neck can be really, really released into the floor if there's no tension there. Inhale, can push the left foot slightly into the floor and with an exhale from our core, we're bringing our legs closer to our torso. Both sit bones are drawing forward to the front edge of the mat. We can totally release the lower left leg. And maybe you wanna try to push a little bit more with your left thigh and come into an apanasana version with a hip opener here. And with the next exhale, we can release to a 90 degree angle between left thigh and torso. Inhaling here. And then with an the exhale, pulsing back, going deliberately into the hip opener without the use of our arms, having the sit bones drawing forward, maybe the lower back rounds just a little bit, if that feel, feels good for you. And stay here. Pulsing, deepening the opening. The left lower leg is totally relaxed. And stay in the stretch for a moment. Hip flexor left is working. And we can breathe for one. And we're trying to to get this 3D breathing to the front, to the sides, to the back. And with the next third exhale, allow your leg to gently release. Place the left foot again onto your mat. And see if you want to do a slight cat-cow movement to release the groin on the left side, and then take your right leg, bring it up with an inhale, straightish to the ceiling, and with an exhale, let's use our belt, our shawl, to go into a very slow stretch, so don't pull on your leg very rapidly, but really make contact, making sure that the right hip bone is still turned towards your left foot, so you're not using the right lower back. And feel that you're kind of making a step towards the ceiling. And then maybe you can really let your right hip sink into the floor as if you would stamp it down onto the floor so that we can feel that the upper part of our thigh bone is really anchoring for right now into the hip socket. And if you're drawing or pulling on your belt or whatever you're using, maybe give a slight counter push with your foot into the belt, so we're activating the leg, and then we can slowly move into the stretch with this active leg, and 
remember that you can always reposition your hands so the shoulders are not coming up and you're under tension in the upper body or the neck, but you're really released on the floor as you're working with this more active stretch here, an active step towards the non-manifest. And the backside of our leg is still a watery line of the bladder meridian, so we're trying to reconnect again to this energy and bringing it into the present moment of using our full potential of the brain and using wholeheartedly our heart energy. And I invite you not only to sense the stretch and the connection between your pelvis and your extended leg on the top, but also to be curious enough to shift a little bit with your right leg. So maybe from right to left, so you feel into the medial and lateral side of your back thigh. Maybe you can feel that your thigh bone moves deeper or settles deeper into the hip socket and this feels fine and nice. And this can aid us with getting into deeper contact with our pelvis and how it's placed on the floor. And you can also work with your foot itself that's placed in the belt, pushing with an inhale a little bit into the belt, going into this activation of the marmor on the sole of our foot. And then with an exhale, going deeper into the stretch for the back of the lower leg. And just feel whatever feels right for you and work very gently and slowly to activate the opening for the backside of the right leg. And maybe like a windsurfer that glides over the wave as he or she is surfing, you can find that you're gaining not speed, but depth. And then before we release the pose, allow yourself to enjoy a deep inhale and exhale, maybe a sigh, and then very gently bending the right knee, releasing the right leg, taking it off or out the belt, mobilizing the ankle joint if this feels right placing the right leg straight on the floor and the left leg follows. See that you can again find yourself on both sides of your pelvis and breathe and sense into your body. And maybe if you dive deeper, you can feel the difference between your right and your left side. Maybe there is this rapid pulsing when you release the leg. Maybe the right and the left side of your body communicate with each other and you feel that there is kind of balance happening. And sometimes at the moment where we shift our attention towards this process, we can feel this shifting from the energy from the left to the right, as the left side would learn from the opening of the right one. So, whatever is happening for you right now, see that we can still and enjoy this for one or two deep breaths. Maybe stay connected to the floor as we're doing this, the areas that we have contact with. 
once again. Inhale deeply. And with the exhale, very consciously from your center, bending the left leg, inhaling, and with an exhale, bringing the right leg bent to the left bent leg. Readjust the body if it needs to move a little bit so that we can feel a nice open space in our trunk, in our neck, in our shoulders, in our arms. And with an exhale, release the shoulders, the arms and the neck again completely into the floor. The right leg stays bent. And as we're lifting with an inhale, the bent left leg, we're just checking if everything on top, the shoulders, the arms and the neck, stay completely relaxed. We can place our left ankle or our right thigh, find our hips, and we're trying to bring our right leg up without engaging the shoulders, arm or neck muscles. So slowly push your right leg or foot into the floor and use the front side of your right thigh to really pull your leg closer. And if you feel that you're coming onto the outside of your left hip into this yang energy of the gallbladder meridian, really release the lower right leg. And again, start the pulsing that with an inhale, the right leg moves away just a little bit. And with an exhale, as you draw, draw the right leg closer in, keep the arms, the shoulders and the neck completely relaxed. And with an inhale, we can release the tension in our left hip just a little bit, gathering more space between lower belly and leg. And with an exhale, again, we can deepen the stretch. And when you have this juicy hip opening on the left, maybe you want to round the lower back just a little bit and release the lower back again. Stay here with a free neck and free arms and feel if you want to move the legs away or around the lower back. This should feel good for your lower back, no pain. And whatever version you chose, arrive in a nice opening for the left outer hip. See if the right lower leg is still relaxed. And then maybe feel how the right thigh is working. Inhale and with an exhale, release the whole package back down to the floor. Maybe you want to sigh. And then everything on top is still released. See if you can slowly come into an extension of your left leg. Allow the left leg to release if you need to, as I do, get a hold of your belt. And let's come into the left side or the, the left back side of our left leg. Become conscious again of your contact of the back to the floor, of this support also, that there's a constant energy exchange between the larger system of the earth and your body. Allow the left leg to come into contact with the floor. Sometimes it helps that we are lifting the hip off for a moment and then grounding it again. And we can even imagine that we are pulling our leg up and then pulling the foot away and grounding the hip. 
so that also the back side of our pelvis, the left ilia, has really a nice contact to the floor. And maybe from the inside you can find this lengthening of the left leg, work really slow and deliberate. And then go slowly into your stretch. And the upper body stays released and relaxed, no pulling off the floor, no struggle, no fight. And we can start pulsing our foot by pushing the front portion that's supported with the belt of our foot into the belt with an inhale and with an exhale, going deeper into a flex and finding a deeper opening for the backside of the left leg. And maybe all this work that we're doing right now helps you in your daily life that when you, during your day, you feel, I'm stressed right now, that you can find the floor and your breath and readjust just slight things, thoughts, a movement, your attitude, your alignment in your physical body to find an opening so that we're not guarding against life and fighting through but really releasing into a wholesome connection where we're working with all parts of our being. And this practice should help you with this in growing. And our body really helps us to find also staying present and relaxed. To learn letting go and finding these gaps where a new consciousness can emerge when stressors are present. So see this potential that this practice holds for you. Find your released and relaxed shoulders. This three D breath is unfolding as you're breathing. And with this calm and this observ observer mode, it's possible that we relax deeper on a deeper level in presence. And when with an exhale you're flexing the foot, see if you can really release it, being aware of how much you need to bend your left leg in, able to, in order to be able to do this. And then slowly the hands may release the pull on the belt. We can bend the left knee, release the left leg. Maybe mobilize very gently the left ankle before we release our left leg onto the floor and bring the right leg to it. Sense again. If you feel more balanced now, feel if there is this communication happening or not. Sense if Pranamana Maya Kosha, your energy body, is sending you signals. Maybe you can feel that your body, either the physical or the energetical, is working. If not, that's okay too. All this teaches us that we can be in contact with our physical body and also with our energetical body. And also this helps us a lot in our daily lives. And we're for two. Jaw is released. Three. 
and three. Very good. And then sense that you can slowly move again, bending one leg, finding the nice contact to the floor through the sole of your foot, bringing the other leg to it, and then find ourselves in a group again in Apanasana, drawing the knees towards the heart, feeling the lower back release, no pain here, also no pain in the front as you draw the knees closer. And then after a couple of releases for the lower back, find yourself at center and able to spine and rock back up to a seated position. And from them, from here, I'm turning around, you can stay as you are on your mat. Let's go into the first downward dog. Find that you're releasing your whole body, that you can release the neck, that you can bend the legs and straighten them. And see if you can find contact to the floor as you're doing this through your hands and your feet. Maybe there's a yawn coming. Maybe after a long day of sitting you need some movement, so that's fine. But see if you can stay connected as you're doing this. Connected to the floor, connected to your body, connected to your breath. Using the breath also to exhale deeply, releasing. Enjoying also this gentle movement, this slowness. And whoever is tired and doesn't want to be here, or if there's high blood pressure, release into Balasana or Child's Pose. But if you can, with an inhale, stay in Downward Dog, lift your right leg. Exhale. See that your upper arms are approximately at the height of your ears and both shoulders are at the same height and then maybe you want to push yourself back a little bit and if you can left leg may be bent drawing the left heel closer to the floor finding the stretch and then releasing the right leg again to the floor and see if you can feel a difference between your right and your left side as you move. Stay in connection to the floor, to your breath, we are two and three. And then slowly arrive with both feet parallel. See that you have anchored your shoulders, that you have freed up your neck and with an inhale Lift your left leg, exhale, bending the right knee, check if your shoulders are level, and then push your arms or your hands on the floor a little bit forward without moving them, going deeper into the pose, maybe the left leg can lift a little bit higher and you're feeling the stretch for the right leg, shoulders still at the same height. Inhale here one more time and with an exhale slowly allow the left leg to descend, come to the right. And neutral shoulders, feet hip width distance apart. And we're pushing through the feet and rolling forward. Shoulders over wrists into plank. Can round our shoulders towards our pelvis and you can come into a chaturanga either with straight legs or with knees on the floor and slowly hover over the floor before you descend. Neck is free, shoulders are rolled back, elbows drawing back. We can find this release and then the head may be completely released as we ascend from the front side of our heart with an inhale into Cobra. And with an exhale, feeling this free space on the front of our shoulders as we descend, maybe come back up again with an inhale and then 
We can pull our hands back and really elongate the spine as we roll back down, coming onto the floor. We set both hands, fingertips underneath shoulders, come back up in a supported hands and knees position on the mat and come into Balasana, release and breathe. And I would like to check more what you're doing, but when I'm constantly checking, then some of you get lost, so yep, you're doing great. Find the long deep breaths in child's pose. Everything's fine, everyone's seeing me. Yes, okay. And stay in Balasana as I'm still talking to the class. So if everyone's anyone's needing something specific here, send me a WhatsApp, then I can look at it because I can't hear you right now. I would have to turn off my mic. But you're probably still in Balasana and waiting here. And slowly make your way back into the downward dog. And we're still here for Three long deep breaths in the downward dog. I just took a sip of water and back to and three. Just checking if there's a WhatsApp arriving. And then slowly find yourself in the lower belly again. And we start with our left leg and lift it up with an inhale. Remember what you did before. And with an exhale, draw your bent left leg to your chest. The knee comes to the chest. And we're placing our left knee behind our left wrist so that the left leg can turn out in the hip. The shoulders are level and wide collarbones, so inhaling here and with an exhale we can sit back either supported on a pillow or on the floor into swan pose. We can inhale lifting the hearts, finding this wide space in our collarbones and chest. And then with an exhale, slowly maybe descend. Maybe you're staying on your hands higher up. It's not important how deep you go. It's important that you find an activation on the outside of your left hip. So we really want to have a little bit of an input on our left outer hip. And we're still here for three long deep breaths. 3D if possible, one. Maybe you feel the sinking to the floor. Two, maybe the spine can pulse a little bit. Neck is free. And three. And then really allow the head to release slowly with an inhale. Come back up onto your hands if you are lower, ascend. And with an exhale, if you have something underneath your left hip, just take it away and pivot on your left hip. Our left foot can aid us with pushing into the floor and we can pivot on our right foot from our 
toes onto our medial inner side of the foot, mobilizing the right hip and come into the half butterfly or Chana Shishasana A. We are turning with an inhale to our right leg. It's okay if your left knee is not on the floor. And with an exhale, come over your right leg. Feel free to adjust your left foot. That's the one where the leg is bent. And then find again that you can pause here, maybe drawing yourself out and forward, out of the pelvis. Maybe you're higher up, that's fine too. And then we want to go back from this position into the hip opener. So we're inhaling and lifting ourselves up. And with the next exhale, we're turning our body towards the left knee. Both hands are on the floor. We can come again with our right leg over the medial side, the inside of our right foot, onto our toes. And then with an exhale, descending into swan again. Can again start to pulse here with an inhale round, with an exhale, straightening the back, with an inhale round, with an exhale, elongating the spine forward, last time, with the inhale round, and with the exhale, extend. As soon as we can reconnect in our center, come slightly up again with an inhale. Exhale, releasing the shoulders. Can again pivot onto our left hip, pushing again on our right foot over the toes to the inside of our right leg, shifting, the knees can be bent, and we're slowly coming back into the half butterfly. Pulsing the spine as we stay here, releasing the head for one, two, maybe you're high up, that's fine too. Also the right leg can be bent, and three. Very good. And then slowly we're shifting for the last time from the half butterfly into the swan. We're inhaling, turning towards our left knee, using our hands to push ourselves off the floor, using a slight push from our left foot and releasing again so that we find the hip opening on the left outer side for the swan and coming deeper. See if your body can deepen naturally, if you're higher up. It's really about the mobilization of the hip joint and the stretch in swan for the outside of the left hip. So wherever that's possible for you, that's fine. One. Shoulders released. Maybe you can come again into the contact to the floor, too. And three. And then find yourself at center, where we've been, slow, further down or on your hands. Slowly let the shoulders roll back, come back up, inhale here, flexing your right back foot. And with an exhale, very, very slowly, freeing up the left leg, push yourself up, find good support from your hands, and come into a downward dog. And maybe the knees are bent. Maybe we can feel that we can wiggle our behind a little bit to just release the hip. And we're still having contact to the floor as we breathe. 
and the breathing for one. And two. And three. Very good. And let's come into our right leg. I'm just turning around so I will be facing the camera. Let the shoulders again be anchored. Find the support through the hands, the contact to the floor. And with an inhale, lift your right leg. And with an exhale, come into this core pull as you're pushing the left feet in, foot into the floor, drawing the right knee forward and allowing the right leg to turn out and the knee is placed consciously behind your right wrist on the floor. Slowly the left leg can scoot back so we can find this outer hip activation or hip opener for the outside of our right hip. You can be supported on your bolster, you can hover, the most important thing is that you're free in your lower back and your right knee is okay. And then slowly descend further down towards the floor. It's really important that you feel that you can arrive in the poses without any pain, without any joint pain. And that we can stay connected to the floor, to the breath, to our body for one. Neck is free. Allow that your potential can slowly unfold organically from the inside to the out, wholeheartedly. And that you, with your breath, are trying to open the inner spaces in the neck, in the hip. Maybe the head can go completely. And with an exhale, there's always this deeper release. And then here, find that after this release, you can find yourself at your center, navel to spine, and we're slowly coming back up to a more seated position. If you are, were supported or are supported underneath your right hip, take it away. And we're pivoting again on our right hip so that the back leg can come from the toes to the inside of our left leg and you can always use the hands to shift so we can come into the half butterfly here feel free to move your right foot a little bit if you need to and then slowly come into half butterfly or jhana shishasana here Descending over your left leg. Maybe you need more space between your left leg and your right foot. And wherever you are descending to, find that you're still alive and not frozen. Pulse the spine slightly. And we're still here for two. One. Neck may release. So we can really move from our pelvis with the breath up to the skull. Two, so we're drawing the creative power into our center. And as we're inhaling, we're slowly coming back up to sitting. Very good. Exhaling. Shifting again, using our hands for support on the floor. Pushing the right knee slightly in the floor, floor, the right foot helps too. And then we can shift over the back leg from the inside to the toes and arrive back into the hip opener here. And then slowly come forward again into swan or pigeon. And we can start to pulse with our breath again here. Maybe you're higher up, maybe you're lower. It's not important. It's about the activation in the right outer hip. Two. And three. And last time change, we're rolling back up, enjoying the release, inhaling. And then with an exhaling, we're pivoting again and coming into 
Jhana Shashasana, half butterfly position over our left leg. Everything can move dynamically with us on our mat as we go forward. And find again this pulsing with our breath here. And wherever you are, stay fluid. One. Three, we're activating in the lower belly, rolling back up last time with an inhale and with an exhaling. We can again support ourselves with the hands, with the right foot, with the right knee, with the left foot. We can align for the hip opening and descending, very good. Back leg may release. We want to have like a symmetrical torso here to the best of our abilities if it's possible. So we can activate the back lines right and left of the spine and we're breathing for one. And two. And three, find yourself again in your lower belly, creative center, release the neck, and slowly from center, allow that you're lifting off the floor with an inhale, and with an exhale, walking back with your hands towards your right leg, shift again, if you have support underneath your right hip, allow it to remove, Bring the back leg forward so that you can come with both legs slowly in front of you and slowly descend onto the floor and invite you to sense your hips into your legs. And hopefully for all of you, it feels like you have flushed all of your hip, the outside, the front side. So we're not only reconnecting the first and the second chakra, but also reconnecting our creative energy to the topic of the class. So whatever wanted or came from the inside as a message to you for unfolding during this year and that we have this online and it can unfold because life always finds a way so that also in our personal life, life will find its way. And with this feel that your legs are released totally, completely into the floor, allow the shoulders to roll back, to release into the earth. And I would like to present you with a prayer in Shavasana. And this prayer is for the physical body. But I think it's suitable for the current situation overall. And the prayer is written in a way that it's kind of a dialogue with how, how, however you want to perceive it, God, your higher self, the universe, your inner guidance.
just check for yourself whatever is suitable to you, what kind of higher, constructive, life-affirming, loving power you can find within yourself that you dedicate this prayer to. And this prayer is an, ex an exchange and a dialogue where we already thank for what we have received. It's about releasing pain, that's the prayer. I thank you that all frequencies of fear, resistance and lack of trust held within my cells of existence that connect my being with physical pain, emotional sorrow and resignation are released and freed. I thank you that my unfulfilled yearning is resolved. Mine is the glory and joy joy of my physical manifestation. I thank you that I now let go of all anxiety and stress that blocks my flow of ease and well-being. I thank you that all structures of dependence that undermine my confidence and joy of decision are filled with light and love. I thank you that God's universal healing power heals and harmonizes me with the frequency of love and forgiveness. I thank you for the miracle of oneness of my body and soul with divine grace that I may recognize and understand my personal patterns of dysfunction and disease. I thank you for the deepest warmth and undivided love for my physical body. I thank you that my kidneys, my liver, and my spleen are connected with the everlasting breath of God, filling my mattresses with continuous soul information and optimal earth energy. I thank you that all my body parts and functions are flawlessly coordinated in every dimension of my being. I thank you that God is one with my spirit and the resolution of perfect health and vitality, that my youthful strength is restored and revived in all my thoughts, feelings, and physical body. And with this sign, might you, that you feel this balanced support from the earth. Feel into your body and feel that you can expand in your body with your breath. Feel that whenever we're in contact, with ourselves and with our own energy and what kind of energy we're holding that we can always come with a life-affirming positive energy into all our cells 
and that we can have joy with our physical body and that whatever we can perceive during our day, maybe this brief moments of joy or this extended periods of joy that we can gift us our body by being present and conscious. And that it's very important to get out of the head and to come into a joyous experience of our physical body. I invite you to find this and maybe also to find or feel how your body feels right now because it's your home to breathe into this, to welcome yourself, to remind yourself of your alignment, so that can that both parts of your heart can work together, so that we have this creativity and logic working together in our brain with our both brain hemispheres online and that the heart and the brain reunited can carry you forward. I invite you to expand in your body, maybe to stretch or to yawn to invite this rejuvenating, fresh wood energy into your body. And then slowly in your own time, through center over your side, slowly come back up to sitting. Very good. And I hope you're all well and you feel fine. Thank you so much for practicing. I invite you again to feel that our own inner plan and our energetical being is aligned to use our heart energy to enliven this. Thank you so much for being here. Namaste.